This lesson forms part of the technical e-learning syllabus. The purpose of this lesson is to introduce the .NET API as an option for those consultants and partners working with the on-premise version of Sage CRM. Members of the developer program already have access to a series of articles that discuss the .NET API within a gated area of the community. In addition, there are a series of training videos that explain the API and how to start your projects using the software development kit, the SDK. In this lesson, I want to consider the .NET API and how the SDK resources can be used to extend Sage CRM. I hope this will be a straightforward and simple introduction that illustrates the nature of the API. I need to explain what the Sage CRM .NET API is and what it is not. If you are used to hearing colleagues or partners or Sage staff talking about classic ASP pages, then you might be tempted to jump to the conclusion that the Sage CRM.NET API was something to do with ASP.NET. You would be wrong. Now, the .NET framework does provide a large body of pre-coded solutions to common programming requirements and manages the execution of programs written specifically for the framework. That's the overall landscape. Let's have a look at ASP.NET first of all. ASP.NET uses the .NET framework as an infrastructure and offers the ability to build pages composed of controls similar to the Windows user interface. You can see those sorts of controls listed on the left hand side of the screen that I'm showing at the moment. The web controls produce segments of HTML and JavaScript which form part of the resulting page sent to the end user's browser. Now the key point about ASP.NET is that it assumes that it is in control of the HTTP request the generation of the HTML to be returned to the browser and the response that sends that HTML back to the browser. So it thinks it's in control of the HTTP response, uh, request response cycle and the generation of the interface. Now SageCRM.net, the SageCRM.net API conforms to the .NET framework. So it provides a type library that exposes the Sage CRM objects, properties, and methods. And it's through the core libraries that Sage CRM.NET component manages both data access and, crucially, web interface generation. Projects developed in Visual Studio, typically in the C Sharp, that use the Sage CRM.NET component are going to be compiled into a library assembly in the form of a DLL. So this is the DLL that is distributed to uh, the server. The DLL is called directly from within Sage CRM and executed by the .NET common language runtime. Now the key thing is that the class is contained within the application extensions constructed using the SageCRM.NET API, reference SageCRM metadata, so as the interface that is generated will look, feel, and perform exactly like the core system pages. So that it's all about that HTTP request response cycle. This image shows that part of the architecture of Sage CRM which governs the .NET API and the extensions that are created. And to understand more fully about the technical design of Sage CRM, you may want to review the e-learning lesson about system architecture. The point that I want to make about the .NET DLLs that are created using the Sage CRM .NET API is that these DLLs are accessed by calls which pass through the main eWare DLL. This is the main program that is, run, that is run within the context of Sage CRM screens. Consider this screen. 
So this should illustrate the point very clearly. If we look at the way in which the relationship tab, you can see the relationship tab uh, here is on the screen that is invoked underneath the company context, this feature has been written entirely within the .NET API. Now look at the URL. If you see the URL that calls the page, it looks like this. You may not understand everything about this URL, but you should be able to see that the URL is directed at the eWare DLL. And there are additional parameters contained within the query string that causes CRM to pass the request to the .NET DLL. Now, hopefully you can start to see why Sage CRM .NET API and ASP.NET pages must not be confused. The reference to the Sage CRM .NET classes from within ASP.NET is not supported and the two are incompatible. This is simply because the way in which they approach and understand the idea of the their place within the HTTP request response cycle. So that leaves some other important questions. Who can use the .NET API? And how do you start a .NET project? And why would you use the .NET API? Well, as you saw from the screenshot previously about the Relationships tab, that, that showed that everyone uses the .NET API. It's a default part of the Sage CRM system. Now, what's significant about that is that everyone can use the DLLs that are the product of the API. This means that developers working with the API do not have to worry about the delivery of a runtime license or environment as that is included in the out-of-the-box install for Sage CRM. What is needed, however, for development is a license that includes development rights. Now, currently, only members of the developer program have access to a license that will allow the SDK to be installed on the development machine. So the SDK only needs to be installed on the development machine. You would create the DLL on the development machine, but it can then be distributed to the production environment. Now, you can learn more about the installation of the SDK um, in articles that are on the community. So I'm not really going to be looking at the installation of the SDK now. But any programming language that conforms with the .NET framework can be used for the development of Sage CRM application extensions. So you can use uh, J Sharp, you could use VB.NET, or you could use C Sharp. Now, although you can write your code in any .NET language, in practice, C-sharp is likely to be the language that is used. Uh, this is mainly because the software development kit only provides examples in C-sharp and all the example code in the documentation and the community is in C-sharp. Um, now, the SDK provides the developer with templates and code snippets that speed up the creation of code and among the resources provided by the SDK are example projects so you can see that there is the you'll get uh, related entities source code which is a version of the code behind the relationships tab uh, there's a company summary project which is a partial rebuild of the company summary screen a compound entry screen which is an example of a compound entry screen and quick look which is a uh, partial rebuild of the company quick look page and that's what we're looking at at the moment now we can see uh, a screenshot here of uh, a rebuild of the opportunity list in the context of a company um, very simple page, very simple, and, and and this is actually goes in very importantly into some of the key aspects of the .NET API, and so this is what the code for that opportunity list looks like. So the .NET API uses the concept of metadata in a broadly similar way to that used by uh, the classic ASP API used by Sage CRM. So here 
the idea is that the metadata does the heavy lifting, does most of the work. In the code shown here, you can see that the constructor has referenced the name of the entity, the list to be used, and the name of the screen to be used as the filter box. And then we've provided some um, contextual information which restricts the, the returned data. But that's all we needed to do to get the working filter box. Now the properties for any screen and screen element, the list, the columns, the screen and the fields within that screen are determined by definitions held in the metadata tables. Um, and if you're looking in the database, these are the database tables prefixed with custom underscore. The .NET API classes obtain the definition from the screens, from metadata, and then generate the HTML necessary for the output into the browser. Now I've already made reference to Sage CRM's system architecture. The .NET API interacts with the eWare DLL. Now this is COM 32-bit architecture, and so the requests written in .NET are actually passed to the eWare DLL through a COM interop layer. If you're a developer, you would write your code in C-sharp. Your code is in a project that references the classes and objects contained in the SageCRM.NET API, which in turn communicate with the eWare DLL through COM interop. The code that you write is then compiled into a DLL and added into the Sage CRM system, where it can be called from menus in a similar way to ASP pages. And this just brings us to uh, really our conclusion. So creating DLLs that extend Sage CRM becomes an option for members of the developer program, as these are the people who can install the SDK. The .NET API has never been seen as a replacement for the ASP COM API, rather it has been seen as a way of meeting specific developers' needs. It allows developers to use the features of a sophisticated integrated development environment, an IDE. It actually exposes deeper and richer functionality than the COM API, but because it's similar and uses metadata to underlie um, all the code that's generated, the extensions that are created look, feel, and perform exactly like core system pages. But many developers like the .NET API because it provides the code that they create as a compiled end product that is not human readable. This means that there is some protection for intellectual property and ensures that nobody can just tweak a line of code so it creates a simpler support environment. But because a compiled assembly has to be added to the system, it also ensures a more disciplined development cycle and maintenance cycle, which is much better for ongoing system support and planned maintenance of the system. And those assemblies, the DLL files that can be added into Sage CRM, can just be copied into position. It just provides a drop in deployment and there is no need to stop and start the server. Now, if you want to know more about becoming a member of the developer program so that you can use the .NET API, then you'll be able to find the information on the community site.